So in this video, I'm down here at the workbench and, um, excuse me, I'm a quick phone call. Hello. Hi, I'm down in the basement trying to do a video. Oh. So I'm down here at the tackle bench in my basement. And one of the things I thought we would cover in this video is the fluke spoon. Uh, and what the application is for it, what's its place, uh, when, how, all that good stuff. Uh, these are the M3 tackle spoons. There's a lot of other ones out there that are also very good. I happen to like these because I like the way that they're put together. Um, and just to make it really basic, to be brutally honest, as you can see, the fluke spoons come in lots of different colors and, uh, and sizes. You know, from uh, one like this, this is a larger blade, a larger spoon uh, that's painted, has more of a bait fish pattern with a, a little bit larger uh, squid rig on the back. Or uh, and here we have another one that is, um, you know, uh, a painted blade. Also, it's a chartreuse and a blue. It has a uh, more of a silicone skirt on the, uh, on the back of it. Uh, and we also have some that have a nice uh, metallic finish to them. Um, and uh, so they all have their, uh, their place, different sizes, different shapes, different colors. And uh, let me just reach up here real quick. Uh, this is one that's out of the package. Okay, this is uh, one that we've uh, used quite a bit. Um, got a lot of big fluke on it. And the way that this uh, fluke spoon is rigged is you have a, a, a T-swivel here, like that. And it goes off to, a, uh, to two liters here. We have one that is connected to the spoon with a, with a, uh, with a snap, get it on there, snap it on, okay, and then this leads up to the T, you would tie your main line, uh, on right here in this open, open, uh, swivel, and then this swivel down here, you would clip on your weight, okay, I don't know if I got a weight over here, yep, I got one, a little unprepared for that, uh, I like the cannonball sinkers, which unfortunately I don't have any right here in front of me. This is your standard old uh, sinker, but you get the point anyway. This is where your weight goes. Okay, so your weight would clip on here. So your weight would be down, um, down here, your main line. Uh, and I like braid for this also, by the way. Uh, I use a main line of braid. Use a double Palomar knot, which I can, I can show you some other time. Um, and then the fluke spoon... Uh, it sits behind it and um, you know so you have the weight down here your main line is up to the left uh, up here and then your fluke spoon behind it and that just is gonna do this kind of uh, almost wiggling uh, effect when it's in the water and uh, so on the back you can see here with some beads down to this um, uh, hook system and, you know, you can put a whole squid on the back, you can put a gulp, you can put a big squid strip if you like on the back of that. Um, it's really up to you. You can put a sea robin strip, whatever you want. Uh, so that's the that's the fluke, uh, fluke spoon out of the package. Okay? And you can see, like I said, how it's rigged. Now let's get into a little more technical stuff with this. Where is it time to put the bucktail down? Okay? This is one of my favorites, the uh, John Skidder... Uh, rattle and swing SNS bucktail, lots of those. Um, where is it time? When is the time to put down the bucktail and use the spoon? I'm going to uh, kind of explain it in a unique way, and this goes back to my freshwater bass fishing days. And the way I like to think about a fluke spoon is um, by Thinking about it is one of these, okay? And this is called, this is out of the freshwater bass fishing world, it's called a spinnerbait, right? And what it, what it has is it has a, uh, a, a weighted head, a lead head, um, could be tungsten, could be all different sorts of metal, and a hook, hook that's uh, molded into the, to the head, all right? And you have your skirt, and you have your blades, okay? These are called willow blades. Uh, there's all different types of blades, but this is more similar to our fluke spoon. Um, and how do these two, um, how are these two similar? 
Well, the reality is, is that I find that the fluke spoon works best, better than, than say, a bucktail, um, when the current is moving faster. What do I mean by faster? Optimal drift speed for a bucktail on a bucktail rig, so, you know, a bucktail down at the bottom and a teaser or some other sort of uh, uh, hook on a dropper loop with, a, with say, a, a gulp grub. Um, I like this for around that, that drift speed of 1.5 and less. My favorite is that 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 drift speed. Okay, that allows you to keep the bucktail more vertical and you're not going to scope way out. Anything higher than that, once we start getting into that two, two and a half, three mile an hour drift speed is when I pick up the fluke spoon. Okay. Now, how does that correlate and relate to uh, a spinnerbait um, in freshwater bass fishing? One of the things, the biggest things with a spinnerbait that you'll notice, uh, we have lots of different uh, blade styles, okay? Well, we had talked about that, different colors, different um, blade combinations, different colors of blades. Okay, you can see here, this is a gold spinnerbait has a uh, metallic polished gold blades. And then you have this, the spinnerbait, which is chartreuse with chartreuse painted blades. This would be a, uh, a spinnerbait that I would use on a cloudier day, right? With less reflection, less sunlight, so less reflection. Uh, that's when I would use painted blades on those darker, cloudier days. All right, we have another one here where it's got some more uh, different, different setup. Okay, same thing, gold blades, has some uh, prism tape that's uh, that's on them, different color, and again, uh, you know you're going to use your your shiny blades uh, when it's sunnier out to get a lot of reflection. So you have uh, you have that. The blades also create vibration. Why is vibration important? That is what the fish uses. Many different types of predator fish, whether it be freshwater or salt, they have what's called a lateral line that runs down the length of their body. Fluke have one as well. And they sense vibration, so they use the sense of smell and the sense of vibration to track down their food. And that's what this shape of blade does. It creates vibration. So you have reflection, you have vibration. Um, the fluke spoon, okay? You have reflection, you have vibration, and that's part of how you trigger those fluke to eat them. Um, so we have color, right? The similarities between a spinnerbait and a fluke spoon. So far, we have color, we have the reflection, we have the vibration. Um, we have different configurations, right? So here's a painted blade uh, that we had talked about in the spinnerbait. Same thing. Painted blade on your fluke spoon. Okay? So those are all similarities between the spinnerbait and the fluke spoon. But what's the biggest one? This is how I determine when to use a fluke spoon versus when to use a bucktail. And we had talked about the drift speed. When, I'm, when I first get out to, let's say we go to Montauk, we're gonna go drift uh, Frisbees. If I really wanna dial in on where the fluke are on that large piece of structure that's out there, um, the fastest way to do it, if the drift speed is right. Sorry about that. We had a had a uh, camera fill down. Um, how we do that, as long as the drift speeds are right, if they're, let's say, again, two miles an hour, two and a half, three, I'm going to start with the fluke spoon. The reason is, just like the spinnerbait, the fluke spoon is designed to cover water. This is what we call a search bait, right? A, a spinner bait in bass fishing, freshwater bass fishing, we use a lot to cover water. So if I'm looking for fish, I want to find where they are, whether they're on logs, are they on, on grass lines, or are they in bushes, I'll pick up a spinner bait and start really fishing quickly to locate where, where the bass are. Okay, tournament. You're gonna, you wanna catch, you have a, a time limit, you gotta catch as many fish as you possibly can. Um, if I'm gonna start, if I wanna really locate where they are first, 
I'll pick up a spinnerbait because I can fish it fast. It's called power fishing. Same thing goes for the fluke spoon. This is our power fishing technique. Okay, this is, we're going to cover a lot of water. We can do longer drifts. We can, we have vibration. We have scent. We have reflection. That's where the fluke spoon comes in. It happens, it's when you're searching, when you're looking for fish. That, to me, is where the fluke spoon really, really shines. And once you find the, the fish, right? We, we know we've gone over an area and, and uh, you know, there's a lot of fluke in this zone. Then we can slow down as the, as the tide slows down, as the drift slows down. Then we can go to the bucktail, okay? We can go to the bucktail and really pick apart, pick apart that, that area that we found the fluke in. In bass fishing, we would do very much the same thing. We would search with a spinnerbait, okay? And once we found the fish and we knew what we were looking for, we would switch to what's called a jig. Okay, this is called a jig. And this is a more precision type presentation, precision type lure, where now that we've located the fish, we can go in there and really pick apart the structure, get some bigger bites, okay? You can get big bites on a spinnerbait, just like you can get big bites on a fluke spoon, right? But that's a, our search bait. That's our power fishing bait. We want to really slow down and pick apart an area in bass fishing. We'll go from a spinnerbait to a jig. And in fluke fishing, we'll go from a fluke spoon to a bucktail. Same thing. The two have a lot of similarities. So anyway, so the next time, I hope that... Uh, describes it to some people in a little bit different way. Um, the fluke spoon has its place, just like everything else does. Um, there's going to be days when the fluke spoon outshines the bucktail, and there's going to be days, obviously, when the bucktail outshines the, the fluke spoon. But it's matching the conditions, making sure that, you know, when you get out there, you have a fluke, fluke rig, fluke spoon uh, rig tied up, you have your bucktail tied up, so when you get there and you really want to Find where those fluke are. Start with the with the fluke spoon. Cover a lot of water. Get some bites. Find find out where on that particular piece of structure most of the fish are, and then you can slow down and pick it apart with the bucktail. So I hope that answers some questions for you. Also, too, just a quick uh, throw this in there. Same thing, just like a spinner bait, right? So we have these two spinner baits, which are tangled. There we go. This one here has shiny blades, all right? We're going to use this on, say, a sunny day so we can get a lot of reflection. On a cloudy day, this one, this spinnerbait here, has painted blades. And this is a, a color that we're going to use on cloudy days, right? So it shows up a little bit better. Same thing goes with the fluke spoon. Okay, on the, on the uh, sunnier days when we have a lot of sunlight, some more light penetration, we're going to use a shiny, reflective blade, a polished blade. Like this. On the um, on the cloudier days, we're going to use painted blades, like these. All right, painted blades show up a little bit better in the uh, in the darker water. Um, you know, if we get if we go to a, a particular area and it has a little bit of the water is a little bit dirtier, um, painted blade like this, a fluorescent painted blade shows up really well. Same thing with a gold. A gold shows up relatively well in muddier water. We get in that clearer water, then we can switch to uh, something that's a little bit more natural, like this more natural painted blade, or if it's uh, a little bit brighter out, a little sunnier, then we can use this reflective one. So anyway, I hope that uh, that gives you something uh, to work with, something a little bit different, a little bit different perspective. Um, you know, everybody has their opinions and ideas, and that's great, um, but you have to you know, I really like to look at it from a from a you know a, a situational standpoint, uh, and and figure out exactly what I can do to maximize the number of bites. Make sure I'm in an area that has the biggest concentration of fluke, uh, and that's how I find them. Find them with the fluke spoon, pick them apart with the with the bucktail. Usually, the bucktail is going to catch bigger fish, just like the jig does in freshwater. Right. So I hope that uh, 
Hope that helps uh, some of you out.